in our previous class we had looked at transportation and we were able to cover a of different forms of transportation of people from the front of the um, where they at the refinery um, so to the refinery down to the um, storage areas of the um, depots and other distribution channels, different forms of transportation that we look at. We have the ones that make them the transportation through the uh, pipelines, trunk lines and the uh, pipelines. We have the transportation that is done using vessels, okay, and that's shipped and like shipped by the uh, through the water body. Then we also have the transportation from terrestrial Correctly using a um, tanker and the rest of it. So, um, different forms of transportation represents uh, for uh, uh, oil and gas. Okay, same thing applies to gases. Now, for gases, most times you have to go to them or put them in state. That's putting them, not putting them in cylinder, you know, because of their. Nature. So before, for us to be able to handle them or contain them, they are usually they are usually compressed. They are usually compressed into um, um, liquid form. So we have them as LNGs and uh, uh, LPGs, liquefied natural gas or liquefied petroleum gas. Okay, now. Talking about storage, we also, I think we also talked about storage in our previous class, and then we looked at, we just did an overview. Today we will be making more studies on storage as we confine our, um, our program. What you can see on the left side of the screen is the assignment for this class. So I'm just inside the website so that uh, we because we've already uh, lost some time to so just look up for the time so you don't miss that part out okay all right so now we'll go back to uh discussion for today talking about Time selection for um, <coughs> for storage petroleum products. Usually, we choose the site that is far, the site that is far away from um, spot chemicals and combustible material. Okay. Now, we look at the floodplain or sites with a high water table. All those kind of areas must be avoided. Wherever you have high water table, where the level of water is usually have, you avoid that. Okay. Then, um, so with high water infiltration rate, it will pose a lot of risk for underground water contamination. Underground water, that water that is um, inside the ground, it could lead to contamination of even our, um, if we start siting our storage around that area, you know. It could be a lot of contamination too. We these are some of the checks that we put in place for site selection of our storage. Okay. Um, then we look at the minimum separation distance too. I mentioned I discussed this in our previous class. Usually for different provinces or different locations, there are um, standardized uh, uh, safety safety distance when we're looking at when we are Citing our storage facilities. Okay. Um, first, usually buildings should not be within the perimeter. Like in, in Nigeria, we always look at about um, 50, 100 meters distance. So even in the location, you don't have offices or uh, anywhere human to find most of the time, most of the working hours. You don't have it close to the tank, the tank farm. 
all right? They don't have that so good distance from the from the from some very good distance away from them. Why? Because we could have different occurrences in this storage facility. All right, we could have different um, occurrences. We could have cases of bleed when you look at the evaporating vapor explosion. We could have cases of leakages or even rupture. All right. Remember in the last class I mentioned something about the way our um, our um, facility usually designed or our tank plants are designed. I talked about the bond wall and all. I was just giving an overview of storage. In our next class, we will um, round that part off or round it off. You see? Um, but I'm just saying the way this has to be. Now, we have cases of, um, of, of leakage. If we have cases of leakage, either from the tank or from the valve or the rest of it, which is called loss of contain any form of loss of containment. Loss of containment means when any um, containment vessel, it could be a pipe, it could be a tank, it could be a cylinder, loses the content. Mm -hmm. So once you have a hydrocarbon content coming out, when it's not a deliberate um, process, that it's not like you're opening a valve or Closing the valve, or you are trying to take out um, the content purposefully, you understand? Then such incident is referred to as what now? Loss of containment. It could be leakage, it could be rupture. If it's leakage, we consider, we consider it as a leakage when it's within, when the orifice is within, you might not see that in your material, just have to do a um, practical or experience or. <coughs> Practically, when the orifice is um, with, when I mean orifice, the cage, the space where the the the, the content, which is as you carbon in this case, is going to be coming out through the entire. When it is within five five to ten mm, five to ten millimeter of diameter in the, the orifice, then such is considered as a leakage. But the moment you start having it above that. And up to like 50 millimeters and above, that is considered as a rupture. All right. Now, we don't want to experience such in the industry. Nobody wants to experience a leakage or rupture because it's difficult to, it is complex to handle when such things occur. It could even result, it is very, very hazardous. Apart from the exposure or the inhalation, of the chemicals or the gases that will come as a result of the loss of containment in the storage area. We could also have fires, you know, at the slightest, because the hydrocarbons, as they were, uh, or as they are, they have a very low flash point. What is flash point? We're talking about the point, the temperature at which the hydrocarbon or a substance will self That's the point at which, or the temperature at which the atmosphere can cause it. With. Vapor pressure of certain um, substance. Okay. Now, what happens in that point is that if you get, if the ten, if the hydrocarbon sees any naked flame that is able to raise to its temperature to the point of uh, ignition, then it will self ignite. I will have from book on, we could have a fire out. So, I hope you can all hear me. I hope you can all hear me. All right. So, if we have, if we we try to um, guide against such occurrences in the uh, storage of hydrocarbon, all right. So, we also have a uh, tank isolation. Okay, I mentioned something about the spacing. So we try to, because of all these um, hazards that are associated with and um, more, a lot of hazards are associated with um, hydrocarbons in general, whether the like petroleum gas or the oxide natural gas or um, what are we, we, we it is expedient that we guide against uh, such 
touch of currency. Okay, so how do we guys increase that? That's part of this assignment that I've also given to you guys. Okay. Now, starting from the house units um, or dwellings and properties, and, and you know, then also from other farms or buildings, you must ensure that your towns are properly spaced from this area. Then we have time towns isolation. What do Safe tank entry. You know, um, isolation means when we talk about isolation, it means that the process by which you permit you permit a state or a, a, a permit state is removed from service and completely protected against the release of energy or material into that space. This is what I'm trying to say. Um, when we have a particular aspect, we don't want any flow or content to be any flow of um, crude or hydrocarbon. Okay, but I'm using hydrocarbon now because it could be gas, it could be uh, crude oil, it could be any of the petroleum um, products. You know, if we don't want it, if we don't want the flow into that area or into that section or into that containment, then we isolate. Most times we do that using a valve or we do that using a flange on the line that leads, that takes the flow or the energy or the product or the content into that section. All right, that is what we mean by what now, tank isolation. There are another step that we also have in this um, storage facility or storage in the oil and gas. Before, before and gas free, what we call the gas. The gas usually, um, most complex, even um, our, our, uh, it called, our trucks now, that we use, this truck that we use in carrying fuel to different filling stations, okay? Maybe from depot to filling stations and the rest of it, or any vessel at all. That usually contains hydrocarbon. That it could be gas, it could be petroleum product, any of the petroleum product. Usually, once you have any of these hydrocarbons in your in your container, that's in your tank, any form of tank, gases will also be present there. All right, that is also present there. I'm sure some of us must have been familiar with. Um, a video that went viral one time in one of the filling stations where a, a dead body was brought out of a tanker that was uh, supposed to be delivering food to a particular location. What has happened there? You know, Nigeria, where our safety consciousness is very, very low. So, what has happened in that case was that the guy well, seemed to have been trying to steal some food. And he had gone in because it has a man, they usually have a manhole. The manhole is like an entry, a space that is that will allow the human being to be able to go into tank. And that's for maintenance. But such tanks are confined spaces because they have limited flow of oxygen inside and you have high level of gas inside it. So what happens is these gases will always remain there even when the content has been taken off. So it is proper for us to be gas before periodically it's proper for such tanks to be degassed. Otherwise we could even have explosion of an you think the tank is empty, but explosion still occurs. We could have what we call the grief or the um, the the uh, Quickly project this passing the finish the assignment. All right, so we could have the brief or the CV. CV. All right, that's for confined vehicle. All right, I want you guys to go read up on, on these brief and CVT. I'll just explain to you. Oh, it's what I'm already explaining anyway. When you have this kind of confined space, limited oxygen flow. And you have an explosion going on inside, then you have 
any of these occurrences here. That's that's something that you don't no 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 organization wants to experience in their facility. Right. So the what is proper for us to do is to dig us when the tank or the the vessel is was empty. So the vapor gas is freed off. And there are um, different processes that we use in doing that. One of them is the use of foam. There's a foam process that we use in um, the gas in also. All right. So <clears throat> to help eliminate all toxic hazards in the tank, like the H2. Another poison, some of them will even have poisonous gases like H2S or even um, pyrophorics. You know, those are very poisonous gases too. Or carbon monoxide, the rest of them. All right. Now, the gassing is different from gas from the gassing of the tank is different from the cleaning of the tank. The cleaning of the tank involves the removal of residual hydrocarbon vapors and gases. You know, you see, but the gassing is also a process. It's also a process. It's also part of the um, tank cleaning. When you have to get to the tank, okay. Uh, but not all cleaning processes for tanks are uh, the gassing. As you say, so understand the difference. At least when you start in nothing of the interior of the tank interior, that's also very important. It, it, it's also a form of ensuring that every the atmosphere inside the, the tank is an inert form, so we don't have ignition occurring. Most of the times, what we also use in such cases is nitrogen gas because nitrogen gas is also very inert. All right. So we have different types of storage tank. We have different types of um, storage tank, and um, among them, we have the cylinders. We have the cylinders, and there are safety um, standards for each of them. Now, for cylinders, we have for cylinders, we, we have we use them in storing our liquefied uh, or liquefied natural gas and our liquefied petroleum gases. All right, so all liquefied or all hydrocarbon gases usually are stored in cylinders. All right, um, that's the basic focus for. Uh, Cylinder for storage. While the ones that are general liquid, why do we have to use the of cylinder? That is for us to be able to maintain the pressure. They need to be under that pressure and in that form. If you put them in cans, you give them space to, to you know, gases, gas molecules are very volatile or very mobile. They, their kinetic energy is very high. So what it means is that once there's any space for them, they occupy that space. So if you put them in tanks, tanks will give will be given crazy space for the molecules to exert their kinetic energy. And in so in so doing, those kind of gases and such a gas can no longer be controlled or trapped. Alright? So for us to be able to trap them and use them in the proper form, that is the purpose of what the purification of um, of that, and you should also know that they are also very, very, very hazardous, very, very volatile, and need to be well controlled. All right. Now, the maximum amount of um, the maximum amount of liquefied petroleum gas treasure containers should be filled with 85 percent at 40 degrees Celsius. That's the standard. For this um, liquefied petroleum, that's the one we use as our gas cooker right? and for our cooking gas, rather. Right? Yeah. It's liquefied petroleum gas. It's a combination, I've said that before, that is a combination of um, uh, hydrogen, of, of propane and butane. It's a combination of propane and butane. Right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, because LNG, the fine natural gas is stored under low temperatures. The fine natural gas containers may be liquid filled from 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. But for liquefied petroleum gas, we use what now? Um, 30% rather. 
but for the first second we use 85 degrees and 85% at 40 degrees Celsius. For the supply natural gas, which is of 92 95 percent. All right, all containers are provided with over pressure release devices, which normally discharge at pressure relating to the liquid temperature above normal and atmospheric temperatures. Okay, so now these are pictures of, um, of a tank farm. This is a picture of a tank farm. You can see the what is looking like green around it now. Those are the bond walls for each of the staff. And I've explained, or as I said in the previous talk, there's a, there's a, um, there's a, there's a standard for these terms. The bond walls must be designed, these bond walls are designed in such a way that they must be able to occupy 110% of what the capacity of that tank is. So if this tank capacity is say one million metric ton or uh, hundred metric ton, bond wall should be able to occupy one hundred and ten percent of this. Why? Because paradventure we have either a leakage or a rupture or uh, a lot any form of loss of containment at any point of this um, of this tank. You know, in safety and in, uh, the oil and gas industry, we always look at, we always plan with the worst case scenario. We plan with the worst case scenario. What would be the worst case scenario in this case? The worst case scenario would be the law that such a camp, maybe one of these camps, all the, that is filled up, all its content. Let's assume you have the leakage around this point at the base, or you have a rupture at the base. What that means is that the total content of this is going to be lost. We will have a loss of containment of the total volume of this tank. Now, if that is going to happen, the none of this content should be allowed to flow out of this, out of its containment. So to still ensure a secondary containment, the bond walls are designed to take above, a little above the capacity of the tank. So everything can leak out or be lost out of the crown. Yes, it will still be contained within this confinement. All right? So that's what we mean by bonding. That's, uh, that's the principle for bonding of um, town crowns. Okay? So these are examples of towns that you have um, the scales uh, around them. You have different lines connecting different parts of the um, and when we want to isolate, all we just need to do is to shut off one of the valves. These are valves. This is where uh, these are different types of valves. We have different forms of valves that are used in the um, oil and gas industry, check valves, uh, um, base valves, and the rest of them. But valves are to allow flow either in different direction in different directions at the particular time to, to control the flow in any line we make use of what now the valves to increase the flow of of food we make use of pumps okay yeah. make use of pumps if you want to increase the flow all right so um another area that we have to look at is the rules of a facility manager like a a a, a storage tank manager for instance you are going to have to conduct on different um, responsibility, monitoring of the tank, maintenance of the equipment. Those are very critical rules. Even security too. There is also security aspects for these are our tank farms or our storage of facilities. Why? Because it could be vandalized. Anything can happen. So we need some different forms of security and uh, measures, both um, physical and mm -hmm. human to use surveillance and also use of uh, different forms of electrical forms and all the rest of them that are also used to control but this valves, this kind of forms or valves sometimes are pneumatically controlled. Pneumatic control is that they are automatically controlled. So you can't even go there and put them on or off. Okay. Many of us are used to um, hearing about vandalization and um, 
the um, bomb creep of oil and gas pipeline. Now, what the government has always tried to do now is to now make use of the same criminals, give them amnesty, and now make them um, the ones in charge of pipeline <laughs> security. So, or <laughs> the country we are in, that's the way of licensing them so that they can now be operating their stores officially, you know. Um, but that is very important also. So you can have a better control and not have um, vandalization by all something can have. All right. So as a as a, as a manager of a storage facility, two basic um, responsibilities that you have in your hand is to monitor for it and also maintenance of the equipment. A lot of it that you have to talk about. So we we'll hold it here until our next class. This is your assignment. Ensure that you submit this assignment before 12 noon of 12. 12 is on Tuesday, all right? You can go submit it earlier. These are your questions. And submit it to engineering.jpto at gmail.com. Using this subject, OGN 301 and then your state, then your center and your state. If you make use of a different, if you make use of a different subject other than this, what is likely to happen is that your assignment will not be seen. Because when we are sorting it out, we will make a new use of the subject. The, you miss me with five see. seconds. Five seconds. Engineer, engineer, Ima, time up, please. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Please take note of that. I may take a screenshot of it and ensure you do that. God bless you. Ah, this is all right.